In this video we're going to look at problem number six and look at using incremental internal rate of return to choose between those projects that are listed A through G. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the internal rate of return of each of the projects and look for those that are less than the minimum required rate of return, which is 10% um, in this case. So I went ahead and copied that table into um, Excel and then calculated the rate of return. The way you do that is you take, because this, um, these investments are very simple, they're just a year zero investment with a year one return, you can just calculate the rate of return directly by taking the ratio of the two and subtracting one. So I've calculated the rate of return of all of the projects, and um, the first thing I'm gonna do is look for those that are less than 10%. So you can see that project number D and um, project F are both less than 10%, so we can eliminate those from an analysis. The other thing we can eliminate is we can look at project E and G, and they both have the same investment amount, but project G returns more. So we can eliminate project E because of the higher return in G. So now the next thing we're going to be doing is looking at the order in which we will evaluate this. So we go from the lowest investment amount to the highest investment amount. So in this case, the investment amount is those that's listed on the um, row number 67. So for A, it's 200. B, it's 1,000. C, it's 350. So what you can see down below that is I've included the order in which I'm going to evaluate them. So the lowest investment is 200, the next is 350, the next is 900, and then the following, the last is B with 1,000. Now you notice I haven't included D, E, and F because I've eliminated those already. So the first thing I do is calculate the um, rate of return on A, which I already did as 10%. So we know that's already good. And then we're gonna say, well, what if we actually invest in C instead of A? Will that extra amount of investment Get, yield the uh, good enough return. So in this case, we're going to say if we invest another $150, we'll get 230. So you can see that 230 is the difference between 450 and 220. So that, when I do that calculation, that's a 53% rate of return, which is greater than 10%. And that means that extra amount is a good investment. So therefore, that means we're not going to do A and we're going to do C instead. So now we've eliminated A and we're going to then now move to look at the next increments, which are now what if we do um, G next? So that's a $900 investment, which is um, 550 over the investment we've already decided on, which is C, and that returns 560, which is only a 2% return. So that means that G is, the extra investment in G is not justified, so we're still gonna go with C. So now we're going to look at the next one, which is B. So we're going to go say the difference between a B investment of 1000 and a C is 350 is an extra 650. And that yields us 9%, which is not more than 10%. It's less than 10%. So that means we're still going to stick with Project C. So we've just gone through this whole process to just arrive at the, the conclusion that we're going to invest in Project Number C.